In this video, I'd like to introduce you to Bill Vogler, a kind man with a big heart who is currently building an off-the-grid homestead in Pennsylvania. After his son Will built an Earthship-inspired greenhouse in his backyard, they decided to take the experiment to the next level. They decided to build a home that will free them from having to pay rent and utility bills every month. The house is still in mid-construction and they faced major setbacks due to COVID-19 in the year 2020. In this interview, Bill is going to share his story with all of us and take us on a tour around the work site of his future homestead. So you brought this all the way from Texas? Yeah. Uh, and then I went down by train and got, uh, I don't know how well, it's been a while since I had it on. So. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Lived in Galveston for a while, then Hitchcock for a while, which is just across the causeway. And then I was in Dickinson with this RV. All right. And uh, where we were was where uh, Harvey. Yeah. Flooded everything. I have pictures of this van with the water all the way up to the windows. Oh, jeez. And we just, everything uh, you're kind of looking at is, is pretty much new or in progress because we got shut down uh, because of the coronavirus. And then May or June, I just started working on it. So we just, a couple months ago, got the trim on the front. And then uh, we tried to get this closed up. So that was like July. August, we put the windows in. Well, by putting the windows in, I made the frames, okay? Because that's 20-some frames I had to make. And it takes about a day for each one of those. So you got 20 windows, it took a month. Yeah. All right, so then, uh, yeah, it'd be September, we stuck the windows in. Fortunately, they fit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, all yeah, kind of crooked. Yeah. <laughs> so how long were you traveling before? Well, I left a week before Harvey came in. All right, but the year before we were up here, uh, Poconos and like looking for land. Uh huh. And I brought this up and did a couple of the, the parks up here. So I kind of knew the area. And then uh, Will said, Hey, you know, Tamaqua is allowing us to build these homes. <clears throat> I said, Okay. And looked on the internet and there was this 18, 19 acres here. Uh huh. So I told him, I said, Go up and look at it. Yeah. So he, he liked it, so we bought it. <laughs> That was 2018? Two years ago. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah, six months, he kept saying, come up, come up, come up. You know, they're finishing the thing at Stonehenge, and his is going to be done, and then mine will be next. So I finally came up. Yeah. yeah. We uh, went through all the problems with the, telling us that the land was uh, wetland. You couldn't have a road on it. We'd have to get special permission. That would take two or three years. Yeah. So you have to learn to play the game. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is Bill Vogler. Uh, this is my house. And we're going to take a look inside and see how far we've come. <laughs> this is a coffin door, they call it. And uh, it'll have more decoration through here. It was just so heavy, I wanted to get it up now, and then I can decorate it. Uh, this is G. She is a uh, full-bred collie out of Oklahoma. And uh, she drank all those beers. <laughs> those bottles are for the wall, and people contribute. So, G. Yes. He's big G. You love this new. So we have a drain here. This is a mud room. Uh, it's uh, have the same kind of door. You can see we have the archway I was putting in. And the idea is that the air from the outside will only come into here. We close this door before we open that door. This is just part of that drain that's going to go across. Um, in, in the middle over there is where the septic system goes out. That's our bathroom. This is our first bedroom. Our supply room right now. So, a little bit of everything there. 
This table has, uh, well, plywood on it, and the idea is it's perfectly flat to make doors. So you put your uh, plywood on here and screw it down, make sure everything's flat before you build your door. So, and then, of course, miter saw. Got to have miter saw. Yeah, if you don't have that, you're not going anywhere. And it gives you an idea of the view from up here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had yellows and reds and greens. It's real pretty. They just turn brown overnight. Right, this is our, our bathroom, and, and you can see we've just put the pipe in there, and we have some uh, hole in the ground yet. So you just started doing the drain plumbing here? Right, yeah, we haven't put the water in yet, and uh, we have a lot of parts. And I could actually run the washing machine, so if I put this in, then I can run the washing machine. Uh, the solar panels, because I don't have them on the front yet, uh, but you can see the wires coming in. And uh, somebody was wondering how difficult it is to uh, put your solar panels in. Uh, it's snap together technology. Okay, so you, you, they come right off the panel. You can buy an extender cable and you just put them together and then run them into the power inverter. Charge controller directly hooked into the uh, solar panels. And it has a picture of the solar panels. Solar panels, I am just laying on the roof. All right, uh, this is uh, six of them. But we have some other ones, like the white one up there is running the fans. That's all it took to run the fans. And then I have a couple I haven't hooked up. The, uh, there's a couple more down by the RV and the other van, and they're keeping the batteries hot. You know, so if I go down there and start that, that van, it'll fire right up. 74, 78 volts, 101, you know, that's what's coming in. Now it pulses to charge the batteries, so you can see this up and down. But normally, in a, when the sun's out, that'll be like 25 or 30, okay? And this, now it's saying the batteries are down because I've been using it, so they're running uh, 21 volts. Normally it would be 24 volts, so that's why it's beeping. It's trying to tell me I got strain on it yeah and if you can see we're uh, rainy it's it's terrible weather outside so it, it's yeah it's struggling but has this been doing well oh yeah normally you've yeah. been you've been able to charge your batteries been able to run the refrigerator the microwave that's a thousand you know a kilowatt microwave uh-huh uh, I just wait for like 10 o'clock thereabouts and this thing will have both green lights on and uh, yeah you can uh, make coffee whatever you want The day before posting this video, I just got an update that the solar panels are now mounted on the front face of the building. Not only does it look great, but the angle that they are mounted at optimizes their solar gain in the winter. And everything has to work together. You know, it's like we were talking about, well, turn the lights on. Well, it all has to feed back to the panel. And there's two systems. I have uh, the DC lights, like on a, a day like today where it's been raining all day. I'm uh, mostly on DC. Yeah, we have these. This is 24 volt lights, so we're not just dependent on the uh, power inverter. All right, so I can have those on at night, things like that, and uh, it'll light the place up. They're yard lights, okay? Uh, the ones they put on the walkways and the like. And the box that comes in, it will actually say 12 volt, you know, supply battery operated. So I just picked them up at Lowe's, and I just put the two of them together to make 24 volts. So that's why there's two of them on. Serving all of Schuylkill County, the W3TWA linked repeater system. So what's this thing? The amateur radio. Uh, if you're out in the woods, uh, they actually have what they call wilderness protocol for injured campers or hikers. Uh, so if you need medical help, um, you can hit it on the repeater. And they're on the mountaintops, almost every mountaintop, every state. So if they linked everything, you could actually talk to California. So, but here, uh, Schuylkill County, they just have four uh, transmitters. They, they pick up and retransmit whatever you say. Right? And the, uh, the radio you heard, that's on DC. It works in the car, so we have it in there. 
She works for sign language. Okay, so I'm trying to think what else I could get her to do. But come on, sit. 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 Come on. See, it doesn't work if you tell her. <laughs> Alright, so you might be wondering, this is an Earthship house, right? Well, not quite. Typically, Earthship homes are built using tires rammed with dirt for a few reasons. First of all, it's a way to reuse something that people normally throw in the garbage. Second, it's pretty economical because you can usually get tires and dirt for free. But lastly, and most importantly, depending on where you live, the design of the house can utilize the thick, earth-filled walls in order to eliminate your heating and cooling bills. And even though Will had used tires to build his greenhouse, Bill's house is built using cinder block filled with concrete. In theory, as long as the house is built correctly, the cinder block walls should still have the same energy-saving effect. Well, the contractor did the hard part. Okay, yes, he did the hard part. He laid the block, uh, Put the footer in, measured it out. He had the uh, ran the dozer to, uh, you know, dig it out and put the cistern in. We have a cistern, 2,000 gallon cistern. So he figured all that out, you know. And then uh, once we had the trusses on, uh, he put the roof on. But then we had to stop. Yeah. So winter came and went. <laughs> And, and then we get back to again. it. Yeah, and that's coming again. And so for people who don't know how this type of system works, what's the idea here? Well, it's the same thing as getting heat from the earth. Your, your back wall is covered with dirt, or you have tires, and the idea is it comes up to the earth's temperature, which is like 60 degrees, and that radiates into the house. All right, underground is going to be at the same temperature. So if you're 100 degrees, you're drawing air through there, you're getting 60 degrees into your area. Now, this is on solar, so it's not costing us any energy. You don't have to pay for it. Now, what's going to happen here, the reason this is like three feet below, uh, we're going to play with the freeze line, okay, with some uh, insulation. Probably just come back, you know, and it, it'll be under that drip thing, and then it'll be filled with dirt. And the idea is to keep uh, keep your dirt from freezing, and then it keeps the house warm. This is something I haven't seen, actually, so... Uh, there's one by every cooling vent. Did you come up with that? Uh, well, Will was using it in his greenhouse, all right, because he was having uh, uh, moisture problems. Uh -huh. And so he picked up a solar-operated fan, and it helped him a lot. So he, he sent me three of them. I got two of them in, I got one more to put in. But it also brings the air in from the... Uh, cooling tubes. Where do the cooling tubes come in the building? Well, they're right outside here. You can see the dent. This would be where one of them is. This is another one. And they go into the rooms. The uh, one room, uh, well, we got stuff stuck in it. Conduit and whatever. But uh, it goes back to the back wall. All the way to the back wall? All the way to the back wall in that corner. And you can see where the pipes are, and then it'll come up like a regular register. Okay, so we can open it or close it as we will. All right, so what are they talking about here? Basically, they're talking about getting free air conditioning by burying a tube under the house that hot air is going to move through and cool down and then come into the building as cool air. And in the winter, when you want to keep the warmth inside the house, you're going to close off the vents that are in the floor so that the cool air doesn't come into the warm room. And the final thing that Bill isn't mentioning here is that all of the glass on the house is facing in the southern direction, because in the winter, the sun comes up in the southern sky, comes in through the windows of the house, and warms up the space. So we're in a rush for this weekend. We're going to do bottle walls, and the idea is to get these doors so we can seal the thing up. You know, we worked with Wills down in uh, Ambler, and it took quite a bit to get those bottles in. But And it's a multiple process. You, you get your bottles in, and then you gotta come back and fill it in. And then you have to clean your bottles. <clears throat> and he was doing a, uh, a pattern, you know, like a swirl. You know, And I've seen some of them where they have a phoenix and all kind of stuff. It's kind of neat. 
cool. they asked me how many bottles I wanted to work on. I said, I'll do one. <laughs> Time consuming. <laughs> so we have a few small rocks. Uh, <laughs> I told Will he could start his rock garden with that one. But we're, we're going to use them for decoration. Um, yeah, it was solar panel. Now this is the internet, so it's huge net. Um, now we have another dish that, that will go for uh, GEOS 19 satellite, and it should give us uh, 253 channels for free. Okay, and they're all in the same direction. So. Uh, all right, we have our gutter system. We only have the back gutter on. What we needed to catch most of the water, and of course it's going into the cistern, 2,000 gallon cistern. And it's usually, when I look at it, it's usually full. So what are you standing on right here? Uh, this is the cistern right through here. And you can see this is the entrance, and there's just a, it ends. But then these are possible openings if we wanted them. And well, you can still see part of the cistern. And this is this whole area. It's just one big tank. Now we have it on this side, so if we want another one, if we don't get, have enough water, we can put another one in. So all the water right now is just coming from this tank? Right off, yeah, yeah, right into this tank, right off the roof into the tank. Come out every couple of days, get the leaves out. <laughs> yeah, out in the woods, you're going to have leaves. <clears throat> and then, uh, like I say, once we get the more of the uh, roof on, we'll have those wings to actually catch some more water. You're going to get some incredible sunsets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got all these windows to watch it, too. Well, that's it for this video, but the story doesn't end there. They've begun using this house as a classroom when they formed something called the Tamaqua Sustainability Project and hosting workshops in order to teach people these unique skills. And if you haven't seen our other videos, we made an Earthships in Pennsylvania playlist for you because there are many more projects that I think you would love so be sure to like and subscribe to the Off Grid Guru if you don't want to miss out. Okay, sit. Right, do you want this? See that look in her lips? Yeah, it's telling me she wants it. Alright. Give me your paw. You give me your paw? Give me your paw. Let's see if you can do that. I haven't done that for a while. Give me your paw. Give me the other paw. <coughs> Reward. Oh, she got the reward. Yeah.